How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel for a brand new video. So today we're going to be taking a look at Elisa in Tekken 8 and I'm going to be doing an introductory course into her character. Now, Elisa is a character who I believe has seen a very big amount of benefit from the new aggressive system that was introduced in Tekken 8. She has a very nice move list and is definitely a lot more oppressive in this game than she ever has been. To start off, Elisa is a very evasive character. She has a good backdash. As you can see, I've always been a fan of her backdash. Her sidestep game is good, very good sidestepping. And she does have some moves that are evasive by nature. So she has that going for her as well. She also has the ability to fly in at your opponent. This is a whole stance where she has certain moves that come out of it. And it allows you to apply pressure on your opponent and allows you for opportunity for mix-ups. In addition to that, the most famous thing about Elisa and where she really excels, especially in Tekken 8, is her chainsaw stance. This thing right here is absolutely lethal. Her chainsaws are incredible. And they got even worse to deal with in Tekken 8. And we're going to be covering just the basics of her chainsaw stance because it's a massive topic. It warrants its own video, but I'll try my best to do just cover the basics of her chainsaw stance, what she has out of it, what you should be doing. All right, so to start off, let's talk about her key moves. Elisa's key moves are the following. She has her standard jabs. She has her standard 1-2 jab, just like so. And then she also has an additional 1-1 one, one jab. Now, these are two 10-frame moves, both jabs, but they both act differently. So whereas her 1-2 is a standard jab string, her 1-1 one, one actually has the ability to go into chainsaw stance by holding, by pressing, 1 plus 2 at the end. So that's something to keep in mind. Traditionally, you want to use 1-1 one, one to punish because it allows her to go into that chainsaw stance. On top of that, she has down forward 1. Now, if you guys know me, I'm always a big fan of traditional down forward 1 mid checks. And the same goes for Elisa. However, the true power of this move lies in the follow-up, which is down forward 1-4, just like so. Now, the reason why I say this is because if you pressure your opponent and condition them to push a button after the initial down forward 1, you can actually follow it up with the 4 for a counter hit. So, watch this. Alright, so I'm going to activate counter hit. At least it has counter hit properties available. If the 4 hits on counter hit, look at what happens there. All right, a different hit effect. Now, the good thing about that is that if she lands that move on counter hit, so if the final hit of that string down forward, the four right there, if that lands on counter hit, you actually can get a free three, two follow up. So let me show you, counter hit, just like that. Look at that damage. Three hit combo for 50 damage, and on top of that, that was a heat engager, and she activated her chainsaw stance. That's absolutely insane, and it's amazing for her. That is a key move that you should 100% remember. Now, talking about more key moves, you want to be using back one a lot. This is a quick mid poke. It's good for checking your opponents, has decent reach. As you can see, I'm this far away from my opponent, range one and it still chips her, right? Maybe a little bit farther, still tip range, right? So you wanna keep this in mind. Back one, very good, quick mid poke. You should be using this a lot. It's very good for pressuring your opponent, mix it up with some down forward ones, back ones, just like so, maybe throw in some jabs, and then throw this out every now and then, right? Keep this move in mind. I think it's absolutely worth it. Next up on the list, we have down back 2-2. Two -two. So this, once again, is a mid poke. It is mid-mid, and this is natural. This is natural. If the first hit connects, the opponent cannot block the second hit. So let me just demonstrate. So as you can see, I was trying to hold back after the first hit connected, and I'm not able to block it because this is natural strength. So down back 2-2, keep that in mind. Also, down back 2-2 can actually go into chainsaw stance by pressing 1 plus 2 at the end. So that's an added benefit to this particular strength. Down back 2-2 by itself is good, natural, mid poke, but by holding, by pressing 1 plus 2 at the end, 
chainsaw stance and then you get an additional weapon and an opportunity to go for more pressure and more mix-ups. One move in particular that I like about Elisa is her up forward two. This thing right here is an incredible move. Up forward two is a safe on block, heat engager. Not only that, but it's a homing move. It's a homing move, so it tracks everywhere. And on top of that, it takes you into chainsaw stance. That is an incredible property of this move. Up forward two, please keep that in mind. This is one of the moves with Elisa that you should 100% be using as much as you can. Another move that I like with Elisa in Tekken 8 that actually got improved from previous versions of the game, Tekken 7 and whatever the heck, down for one plus two. This move got a massive buff in this game. The reason why is because this move automatically jails. So in previous Tekken games, if you threw out down four, one plus two, your opponent was able to duck the second hit. So it's a low high string, low high, just like that. However, in previous Tekken games, your opponent was able to duck the high even if the low connected. However, that is no longer the case. That is no longer the case and it is officially safer to do. The only way this can be countered is if your opponent is already ducking the low and they have to remain ducking in order to punish this move. But this got a massive buff in Tekken 8. I remember when I was first fighting Elisa in this game and when I first tried her out, I was amazed. I thought I was messing up my inputs on my controller, but no, it's true, you can no longer duck this. So feel free, do this as much as you can. A nice little bonus about down four, one plus two, is that if you're at the wall and it hits, wall splat, just like that. And you're able to get a wall combo for full damage. So yeah, like I said, feel free. Use this move as much as you can because it is now a lot better. It's more viable, it's safer. Throw this out. All right, so let's talk about some low pokes. So of course, Elisa has a generic down four. This is always a valid choice to go if you want to go uh, for your opponent's ankles, low poke them, maybe chip away at their health, give them something else to think about. It is minus 12 on block, so if you're going to get punished, it's not going to get punished that hard. It used to be more negative, so this is a nice improvement. On top of that, she also has down back three. This is another low poke, as you can see, of course. However, it is a little bit more punishable at minus 13. However, it is still an option that you have. And to be honest, I can't think of any character that would be able to launch it. It's escaping my mind at the moment. I mean, if Eddie gets released and he still has his wall standing 1-3 at 13 frames, then that would be uh, trouble for Elisa. But regardless, it's minus 13. It's a quick low poke. Mix it up between these two. You should be good to go. It's, they're, they're both viable. A personal favorite low of mine that Elisa has is from Crouch, she has one plus two. This is a two hit string. It's natural, decent damage at 26. And of course, if, you're, if, if it hits, your opponent can't block it. Another low to keep in mind is her down three. This is a bit slower on startup and it does cover a lot of range, however. It leaves her in crouching position. It leaves Elisa in crouching position, so you might be able to go for down three and then go into the additional low, the crouching one plus two that I was talking about earlier. So it's just something to keep in mind as well. One of my personal favorite moves is Elisa's forward forward three, four four. That one right there. And I like throwing this out every now and then. Minus 10 on block. First two hits jail and you can surprise the opponent with the mid ender. So it's something to keep in mind. And also at the end of this string, she also has the ability to go into chainsaw stance by pressing one plus two, therefore giving you the opportunity for more added pressure to your opponent. All right, let's talk about Elisa's chainsaw stance, which is officially known as destructive stance. So to enter it manually, you press down one plus two, just like so. And as mentioned, there are certain moves that will put Elisa into chainsaw stance. So that's something that you have to keep in mind when you learn how to play this character, figure out what moves put her into this stance and so on and so forth. Now, 
In this stance, Elisa is basically a new character. She has access to new moves, and it is during her chainsaw stance where Elisa has various options when it comes to mix-ups mix -ups and pressure. As I mentioned in the beginning, her chainsaw stance was already annoying in previous games, but it's even worse to deal with in Tekken 8, so it's good news for you, the Elisa player, bad news for the opponent. So, here's what she has out of it. Key moves. Forward 1. This is a very fast move. As you can see, it comes out very fast on startup, and it leaves you on plus frames on blocks, so keep this in mind and also on hit, as you can see. Chainsaw stance down two. This is a very annoying load to deal with, and you're gonna be using this a lot. The good thing about this move is that your opponent has to block it because they can't parry it. Weapon attacks cannot be parried, so knowing that, Elisa already has the advantage right there. Other moves from Chainsaw she has that you might be using often is one plus two, just like so, forward one plus two, and back one plus two. Also, in chainsaw stance, if she goes into fly stance, you can do that by pressing forward three, then if you press one plus two, that move right there, absolutely lethal, and it's a good combo ender as well. All right, so very quick post-production recording because I can't believe I forgot about this, but it's really important. So, out of chainsaw stance, Elisa actually has a hell sweep, and this is how you do it. So you input chainsaw, right? Go into chainsaw stance. Push forward three to go into fly stance. As you're flying in, press forward two two, and Elisa will do a hell sweep. All right, so watch. Just like that. This is a very good move out of chainsaw stance, fly stance that you should be using. Keep this one in mind. I can't believe I forgot about it, but here I am, post-production, letting you guys know. Back to the original video. Heat Engagers. She has a variety of them, of course, but the common ones that you'll be using are 3-2, a 4-2, forward 4-2-1. Two, forward two, one. one thing I almost forgot, I'm glad I caught this, is I almost forgot to talk about her running too. That move, very good to use, good to throw out. And the best thing about this move is that at the end, she can go into chainsaw stance by pressing one plus two. And what does that mean? Of course, it gives you more options, more opportunity to continue your offense. Not to mention that it's plus five on block. Not only that, plus five on block with chainsaw. And another personal favorite move of mine from while running is three, four. All right, let's talk about her punish game. 10 frame, one, two, or 1-1, one, one, and she can go into chainsaw stance by holding, by pressing 1 plus 2 at the end. 12 frame, 2-2, two, two, gives you a knockdown, also wall splats. 13 frame, you can do standing 4, or 3-2, which gives you a heat engager into chainsaw. 14 frame, forward 1 plus 2. You can also press 3 to go into fly stance and apply pressure at the end. She also has 4-3, 1 plus 2, and also 4-3, 15 frame, up forward 4-4, four, four, hop kick. This move is a personal favorite of mine because it reminds me of Katarina's hop kick from Tekken 7. And the good thing about this is that sometimes you will catch opponents pressing in the middle of the move and even if the first hit doesn't connect, the second kick coming down will connect and it'll still allow you to get a combo. So it's just something to keep in mind and that does happen in matches. So remember, 15 frame, hop kick punish. 16 frame, she has down forward two. 17 frame, up back two. This is her power crush, and she can actually do this out of crouch. This is also a good option to punish moves with pushback, such as Paul's death fist. And for 18 frame, she does have back three plus four. Punishers from crouching. 10 frame, down jab. 11 frame, while standing four. 13 frame, while standing 1-2. She can also go into chainsaw after the second hit of that string. 15 frame, hop kick out of crouch. 17 frame and worse, while standing 2. And she can also go into fly stance after that. And there you have it. An introductory guide on how to play Elisa and how to get familiar with her character in Tekken 8. 
overall, I think she is a very strong character in this game. She definitely benefits from the aggressive nature of Tekken 8, and she is, in my opinion, a more complete and better version of herself than she ever has been in any Tekken game. I believe Elisa is a very easy character to pick up, very simple, straightforward, but she's very effective. And of course, like any other character, it does take practice to really go in depth with her and master all the fine details that her character has to offer. Let me know what y'all thought. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good day. Stay safe out there, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.